Welcome to the second part of Polar Representation of Complex Numbers. So far, we learned the basics of complex plane and the transformation of a number from the rectangular form to the polar form. Here we go through more discussion through practice. As a general example, let us transform 2 plus J3 to polar form. The magnitude or modulus is the square root of real part squared plus imaginary part squared which is square root of 13, or 3.606. The phase angle, or argument, is the inverse tangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part, which gives 56.31 degrees by using the calculator. Now here, you must be aware that there is always another solution to tan inverse that the calculator did not give you but you will be able to calculate it simply by adding 180 degrees to the first given solution. We now have two solutions. One is in the first quarter and the other is in the third quarter. But in this example, we choose the first one because it agrees with the quarter expected by the positive real and imaginary parts. And now the transformation is complete. 2 plus J3 equals 3.606 at the phase of 56.31 degrees. Let's have the same example with a slight modification. All values are the same, but the real part is now negative. The magnitude of minus 2 plus J3 is clearly not changed from before, but the argument now is tan inverse 3 divided by minus 2 which is equal to minus 56.31 degrees using the calculator. The other solution, of course, is minus 56.31 degrees plus 180 degrees. Now we need to choose the correct angle. Minus 2 plus J3 exists in the second quarter, so we must choose this phase angle because it is in the second quarter as well. And now the transformation is complete. Minus 2 plus J3 equals 3.606 at a phase of 123.69 degrees. The picture is probably clearer if we plot the numbers in the complex plane. Here is 2 plus J3 lying in the first quarter, and so having an angle somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. While minus 2 plus J3 is here in the second quarter, with a phase angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Both numbers are reflections to each other around the imaginary axis with same distance to origin, or in other words, same magnitude. Let us have another example with this pair of complex numbers, 2.5 plus j and 2.5 minus j. These two numbers are basically the conjugate to each other. For 2.5 plus j, the magnitude is the square root of 2.5 squared plus 1 squared, which equals 2.69. The phase is tan inverse the imaginary part divided by the real part, which equals 21.8 degrees or 21.8 degrees plus 180 degrees. But we will choose the 21.8 degrees because it is in the first quarter as expected by positive real and imaginary parts. For 2.5 minus j, the magnitude is not changed, but the phase angle is now negative 21.8 degrees. This flip in angle is a result from flipping the sign of imaginary part due to the conjugate operation. Here are the numbers in complex plane. It is clear that both vectors make the same angle with the positive real axis, but the rotations are opposite to each other, making their phases of opposite signs. This actually can be generalized. Applying conjugate operation to a complex number in polar form is equivalent to flipping the sign of its phase angle. In writing, the conjugate of r at the phase of theta is r at the phase of minus theta. Now, what happens if the sign of the entire complex number is flipped, like in this example? Here, minus 1 plus j4 is actually minus 1 times 1 minus j4. Let's find the polar representation of each one independently. 1 minus j4 has a magnitude of the square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared, 
which equals 4.123. Its argument is tan inverse minus 4 divided by 1, which is minus 76 degrees or minus 76 plus 180 degrees. But we choose minus 76 degrees because it puts it in the fourth quarter as expected by the rectangular form. Minus 1 plus J4 has the same magnitude, and its argument, tan inverse of the 4 divided by minus 1, would actually give us the same choices of solutions, minus 76 degrees and minus 76 degrees plus 180 degrees. This time, however, we will choose this one because it puts us in the second quarter as expected by the rectangular form of the number. Looking into both numbers in polar, it is clear now that the only difference is a 180 degrees shift in phase angle. This is also obvious if we look into their representation on complex plane. In general, flipping the sign of a complex number is equivalent to 180 degrees phase shift. In writing, r at the phase of theta multiplied by minus 1 is equivalent to r at the phase of theta plus 180 degrees. Assume now that we know the complex number in polar form and wish to transform it to its rectangular form. This means that we need to calculate the real and imaginary parts from the magnitude and the phase angle. This is actually simple trigonometry. The real part is the magnitude times cosine of the angle and the imaginary part is the magnitude times sine of the angle. In writing, if r at the phase of theta is the polar form, then the real part A equals r times cosine theta, and the imaginary part B equals r times sine theta. In other words, r at the phase of theta equals r cosine theta plus j r sine theta. And if r is taken out as a common factor, it becomes r times cosine theta plus j sine theta. Let's do a simple example to illustrate. We have these four complex numbers in polar forms and wish to find their rectangular forms. We apply the transformation explained as follows. 2 at the phase of 30 degrees has a magnitude of 2 and phase of 30 degrees. So the real part is 2 cosine 30 degrees, and the imaginary part is 2 times sine 30 degrees, which would all evaluate as 1.732 plus j. What about 2 at the phase of 150 degrees? It will be just as simple. The real part is 2 cosine 150 degrees, and the imaginary part is 2 sine 150 degrees. Same for the rest, no tricks at all. Just a simple application of the transformation explained in the previous slide. For completeness, here are the numbers on complex plane. And now it is your turn. Apply what you have learned so far in this practice and feel free to post your solutions in the comments. And this is another practice that might require a bit more of your focus. Thank you for watching.